Hello friends, welcome all of you to my channel and today we will be talking about a very new important topic, pericardial effusion. So first of all, I want to let you know the anatomy or layers in a very brief. So let's see, this is a figure of the heart, basically the, uh, I will show you the uh, peri pericardium layer. So basically the pericardium has the two layers, one serous pericardium and another is fibrous pericardium. So in serous pericardium, it is basically two types. This is visceral layer and parietal layer. So one of the layer is attached. So this layer is attached to the myocardium. This is myocardium and this is actually the visceral layer. So this is serous pericardium. And I mean, this layer is serous pericardium, the color in the red color. And the, this is a green in green color. I have shown the fibrous layer and the red line is showing the parietal layer. And the both visceral and parietal layer comprises of the serous pericardium. And the space between the visceral and parietal layer is known as pericardial space or pericardial cavity. And normally this space is a potential, is, this space contains the uh, 20 to 50 ml of fluid. So normal amount of fluid in this, uh, this space is known as uh, pericardial, uh, pericardial fluid and normal amount is 20 to 50 ml. So this uh, fluid is known as pericardial fluid and normal amount is almost 20 to 50 ml but if the fluid level is greater than 50 ml then we will call it as a pericardial effusion so what is pericardial effusion pericardial effusion is a fluid in the pericardial space or cavity greater than 50 ml so that is called pericardial effusion now first of all what are the causes of the pericardial effusion the so first and foremost causes remember all all always remember all the pericarditis so all the pericarditis are associated with the development of pericardial effusion so first answer cause in the cause the first thing is pericarditis another thing is congestive heart failure congestive heart failure so in congestive heart failure uh, there will be the uh, pericardial effusion and the third thing is that uh, there may be the uh, pericardial effusion due to some trauma so due to some trauma or different condition, the pericardial effusion can happen. So these are the main thing which you have to know in the uh, basics of the pericardial effusion. Now let's talk about how to diagnose them and uh, how to treat them. Uh, now let's talk about what are the mechanism of the pericardial effusion development. So very simple mechanism. Let's suppose if any uh, person is having the pericarditis, then first of all the thing what will happen that in pericarditis there is inflammation of the pericardium due to which the inflammatory mediators lead to the actually the vasodilation leads to the capillary dilation or vasodilation in the pericardium vasodilation in pericardium and let's see uh, let's suppose this is the myocardium this is a uh, visceral layer of the serous pericardium and this is a uh, let's suppose this is a parietal layer of the serous pericardium and let's suppose this is a fibrous pericardium so see basically the blood vessels are present in the visceral and parietal layer and whenever there is inflammation there will be vasodilation so there will be dilation of these arterioles and whenever these uh, capillaries and arteries dilate they will actually secrete the plasma or the plasma will be infiltrated from the capillaries and due to which the in, there will be the increase in the amount of the fluid in the pericardial space so this is basically the main mechanism by which the uh, effusion take place so i will not go in very detail about the main mechanism i have already discussed uh, these things in the uh, lecture of the acute pericarditis so you can once uh, you can consult to pericarditis then i will get back to you know, know to another things now let's start the how to diagnose them so basically the diagnosis is mediated by the first of all the echocardiography echocardiography Basically, the echocardiography is useful if the fluid amount is greater than 50 ml. And now another investigation we have that we have the chest x-ray. But the chest x-ray is useful when the fluid is greater than 200 ml. So let's suppose if, the, if any person is having the fluid between 50 to 200 ml, then which is an investigation of choice? The simple answer is echocardiography. But if the fluid is greater than 200 ml, then what is the investigation of choice? Then also echocardiography. But yes, uh, if greater than 200 uh, ml, if the, if the uh, fluid uh, in the pericardial cavity is greater than 200 ml, then yes, uh, the finding will be greater than chest x-ray also. So you can uh, take the help of chest x-ray. Third thing that uh, you, uh, ECG is going to help you uh, to tell about the pericardial effusion. So let's uh, study all these all things in detail. 
uh, in diagnosis, let's talk about the ECG first. So ECG is my favorite part. So let's talk about ECG. So first of all, you have to know that uh, uh, from a normal heart, what is the difference in the pericardial effusion? So let's suppose this is a heart and the, around this heart, this is a, a layer of the pericardium and we have this the effusion. We have this effusion. So this is a fluid and now with whatever the electrical activity is produced in the heart has to travel a lot of the distance and then only it can reach the electrode. Let's suppose this is the electrode. And this electrode is catching the current produced by heart and it is producing the ECG in response to that. But what is the difference from the normal person? That the normal person ha heart has, when the normal person heart produces the current, it has not to travel, it hasn't to travel this extra distance. In that, this person is, in this person, basically the, uh, due to the fluid present around the heart, the electrical activity whatever the produce in the heart has to produce has to travel extra distance of this pericardium and the uh, fluid due to which uh, there will be very less voltage uh, reaching the less current reaching the electrode due to which in ECG whenever we see we will see the low voltage ECG we will see the low voltage ECG so what is the reason behind low voltage ECG very simple there is a so much of the fluid around the heart and due to which the electrical activity whatever is produced has to travel a more distance to reach electrode in comparison to the normal person that is why the there whatever the voltage reaches the ecg is very is low and due to which the ecg is low voltage ecg then what is it how to know the voltage of the ecg is low it's very simple if there is a low voltage ECG, you will see that the amplitude of every wave, so let's suppose this is a P, this is a Q, R, S and this is a T, then in the low voltage ECG, you will see the very less amplitude of like this. So this is basically low voltage ECG, low voltage ECG. As you can see from the normal, uh, from the normal uh, ECG, it is different that the each amplitude has decreased. But remember, low voltage ECG has no problem in duration. No problem in duration. In the duration of the waves, then I mean uh, like the P wave of duration of the P wave, the duration of QRS or duration of the PR segment, there will be no any problem at all. But yes, what will, what will be the main problem? The problem will be the amplitude of the waves get decreased. And this is the thing uh, how we're going to know about the low voltage ECG. Now let's talk about another things in the ECG. Now we all know that the QRS wave is produced, whatever the QRS wave is produced due to the ventricular depolarization. So the QRS wave is basically produced to the ventricular depolarization. And let me show you, this is the main vector that actually produces the QRS wave. This is the main vector that produces the QRS wave. So normally, a normal person QRS actually do not vary in ECG. I mean, the amplitude of QRS remains constant in ECG. So let's suppose, let's see a normal ECG. So what we, have, what we will see in normal ECG. So let's first talk about normal. Always first talk about the normal. So let's suppose I am talking about normal. So QRS and T, again the P and QRS and t again we have normal and and the and the uh, qrs and t so see the amplitude of the uh, qrs is same in every step but what happens in the pericardial effusion that the heart is now in a such a space there is a fluid around the heart and now whenever the heart is contracting or it is whenever it is producing any current the heart is basically moving heart is basically moving so whenever the heart moves so let's suppose i have placed an electrode at this point let's suppose i have placed an electrode let's suppose this is an electrode and it is actually catching the current it is actually catching the current produced by the ventricular depolarization let's suppose this is an electrode and it is catching the current produced by the ventricular depolarization since the there is a so much fluid around the heart now the heart actually moves now the heart 
has a very free space to move and now it is it, it will be like it will be feel like it is in swimming pool the heart will feel i am in swimming pool i am in swimming pool so what you will do in swimming pool you will actually move here and there so the heart will also change its position it will move here and there and due to the changing its position from here and there what will happen this major ventricular waves that produces qrs wave this wave is also not fixed sometime when the heart moves here when the heart moves here the wave will go here when the heart moves more far the wave will go far and the wet when the heart again comes near then the wave will go more nearer i mean to say that the amount of the current reaching the electrode will not be same especially in case of the ventricular depolarization as the major ventricular waves especially they fluctuate the wave of the qrs wave that's why fluctuate uh, in case of the pericardial effusion reason is the heart position is not constant the heart is constantly changing its position as it is in swimming pool it is constantly moving or dangling here here and there and due to which due to which there will be uh, there will be fluctuation of the uh, current reaching the electrode that's why there will be the so fluctuation in qrs amplitude there will be the fluctuation in qrs amplitude and this fluctuation in qrs amplitude amplitude is known as electrical alternance electrical alternance so what is electrical alternance electrical alternance is basically the fluctuation in qrs complex or qrs uh, qrs wave amplitude reason is that the heart is not or uh, in a constant place it is moving at every time it's contract and due to its movement the wave or the uh, current going to the electrode is also not constant and that's why uh, the current reaching the electrode as it is not constant that's why the wave formed by the electrode or the ecg qrs wave formed by the electrode is also not constant that's why the that's why there is a various variation in the qrs wave so let's see the ecg now so let's see the ecg so in ecg you will see like this so let's suppose this is a qrs and uh, this t and let's suppose another qrs is very very big and then t again some qrs is very uh, so this is a uh, you can see one some qrs is uh, uh, very uh, very large some is small some is medium so that type that type of thing you will see in case of the pericardial effusion so in ecg we see the two things one of the thing was uh, that uh, there will be low voltage ecg low voltage ecg and another thing was please whatever i say write down please and another thing was there will be there was electrical alternance as we know the pericardial effusion if there is a pericardial effusion then the person may have the pericardial tamponade that the heart function may be compromised due to the excessive amount of fluid and that's why the pericardial effusion may lead to may lead to pericardial tamponade i means cardiac tamponade may lead to cardiac tamponade that is it the fluid will compress the heart now the fluid will compress the heart now and there will be findings more extra findings of the cardiac tamponade also but that will we will discuss in the cardiac tamponade part from here i want just to tell you that in cardiac tamponade also you will see the low voltage ecg and you will see the electrical alternance so uh, in that time i will not tell how the low voltage ecg and electrical alternance will develop but you should know that yes these two things develop in case of cardiac tamponade also hello guys welcome back and now let's see again the chest x ray so chest x ray so let's talk about so chest x ray will show you the uh, signs of the pericardial effusion if it is greater than 200 ml if it is greater than 200 ml so let's see uh, let's see this is a this is a lung let's see this is a lung and uh, let's suppose this is a heart this is a normal heart 
and we have let's suppose this is a uh, some artery veins going to the heart so this is a normal ecg what happens in case of the uh, pericardial fusion that the so this in this space you will see the cardiac shadow so in this space you will see that this is actually cardiac shadow cardiac shadow or we will also say this cardiac silhouette silhouette cardiac silhouette okay so this is cardiac shadow or cardiac silhouette and now what happens in case of the pericardial effusion uh, due to the peri uh, pericardial effusion the actually the cardiac shadow has increased basically the cardiac shadow has increased and now this appears like a water bottle water bottle like this see it appears like the water bottle so that's why uh, due to the increased increased cardiac shadow or cardiac silhouette silhouette Okay, due to increase color, it appears like the water bottle appearance. Water bottle appearance. And the thing, uh, we will also uh, call it as a money bag appearance. So, this is also known as money bag appearance. Money bag appearance. And you can easily see the cardiothoracic ratio has increased. Normally, this cardiothoracic ratio is yani ki the ratio between the heart shadow and the total thorax shadow is less than 50%. Yani normal, your this heart is the shadow of the heart is less than 50% uh, of the total shadow. So this there will be increase in cardiothoracic ratio. So cardiothoracic ratio is increased. So these are the findings you will get in the chest x-ray of the pericardial fusion hi friends uh, we will talk about the treatment portion in basically in cardiac tamponade so let's uh, see the cardiac tamponade then you will also know about the cardiac effusion treatment basically the treatment are basically same so thank you for watching this video bye bye